Let's turn our attention now to the reactivity of thiols. If these elementary steps don't look familiar, check out my video series on the elementary steps of polar organic reaction mechanisms from Chem 2311. The general points with thiols are that they are stronger Bronsted acids than comparable alcohols, and they're somewhat better nucleophiles than comparable alcohols, so we'll see sulfur acting as a nucleophile throughout this video. But one of the first things to always look out for, of course, is proton transfer. And deprotonation of that sulfhydryl hydrogen is a common step in reaction mechanisms of thiols. And so in the presence of a strong enough base, deprotonation can occur to generate a thiolate. And the base here doesn't have to be all that strong, right? The pKa of a thiol is generally only about 11 or so. So relatively weak bases can accomplish this process. It's also possible in the presence of a strong acid to protonate the thiol sulfur. And here we need a really strong acid at high concentration to do this since that thiol sulfur is not that basic. But if we can get it done, the resulting intermediate is analogous to the protonated alcohol that we've seen previously. This SH2 plus group has the potential to act as a nucleophage generating, for example, a carbocation or engaging in a substitution process. The sulfur atom of a neutral thiol can coordinate to a six electron electrophile such as a borane or a carbocation. So for example, if we can generate a carbocation like this in the midst of something like an SN1 reaction, the thiol sulfur will readily coordinate to it in an A sub N or association of a nucleophile elementary step. In the resulting product, the thiol sulfur is now positively charged and we've formed a new bond between carbon and sulfur. The thiol sulfur can also participate as a nucleophile in concerted SN2 elementary steps with a very strong nucleophage or a very strong electrophile such as a triflate. We've seen the triflate group before and recalled that this OTF group is a very good leaving group, very strong nucleophage. Under these conditions, the sulfur again acts as a nucleophile and essentially displaces the triflate group as the CO bond breaks toward oxygen. The resulting product again contains a positive charge on sulfur and a new carbon sulfur bond, but at the same time, we've also generated the triflate anion as a leaving group. Notice that in this protonation of the sulfur, as well as the nucleophilic association step and the SN2 step, we see the sulfur of the sulfhydryl group acting as a nucleophile. Thiolates are the conjugate bases of thiols, and they're generated through the deprotonation of the sulfhydryl hydrogen. And of course, if thiols are good nucleophiles, then thiolates are even better nucleophiles. However, they tend to be weaker Bronsted bases than alkoxides, but generally better nucleophiles. So we find thiolates acting as nucleophiles in a number of different ways. For example, an anionic thiolate can add to a polarized pi bond, such as we find in a carbonyl compound, through an AD sub N, or nucleophilic addition, elementary step. And in this elementary step, the anionic sulfur donates a pair of electrons to the electrophilic carbon atom, which is partially positively charged, and a pair of electrons heads up to the more electronegative atom in the pi bond, oxygen. In the resulting products, we've established a new carbon-sulfur single bond, we've broken the carbon-oxygen pi bond, and the oxygen now has a negative charge. We also see the anionic sulfur of a thiolate acting as a nucleophile towards sigma star acceptors, for example, in SN2 elementary steps. So in the step you're seeing here, the anionic sulfur donates a pair of electrons to the electrophilic carbon atom, and the carbon-bromine bond breaks toward the more electronegative bromine atom. The resulting products are a thioether, which is a sulfur analog of the ether, and bromide anion, Br-. This is an intermolecular N to sigma star interaction, but intramolecular or internal N to sigma star overlap can result in beta elimination. So for example, in the substrate shown here, we have an anionic sulfur atom positioned adjacent to a carbon linked to chlorine. So we have a nucleophilic lone pair, highlighted in red on the sulfur atom, and an electrophilic carbon linked to a good nucleophage chlorine, and that's highlighted in blue, and these are adjacent to one another, so we have the ingredients required for beta elimination. Donation of that lone pair on sulfur into a new carbon-sulfur pi bond, along with cleavage of the carbon-chlorine bond toward the more electronegative chlorine, generates the products 
and the products contain a new carbon sulfur pi bond, a CS double bond in the product shown here, and the other product is Cl minus chloride anion. So the important point to note in all three of these examples is that the thiolate is acting as a nucleophile at its anionic sulfur atom. And this theme of sulfur as nucleophile is something that comes up in reactions of thiols and thiolates in both laboratory and biochemical contexts. For example, the amino acid cysteine, which has a thiol in its side chain, is a key nucleophile in a number of biochemical reactions. And we'll see it in action many times when we look at enzyme-catalyzed mechanisms later in the semester.